I'm Bernie McGuire, and I'm 41, and even though I look like I'm 35, and I went to school up at the U, BYU, lived here in Provo for about 15 years or so, and I'm an attorney here in Provo, I have my office here in the house, uh, social security disability claims that you're hearing up in Salt Lake, and satellite offices in St. George, wherever. So, uh, I was involved in a car accident when I was 17. Uh, the fall of my senior year, and a couple of friends of mine and myself went to pull up here for the house of a girl who was a friend of ours. It was her birthday, and we got the toilet paper, started driving down a small, dark country road, and there were a couple of horses on the road, and there was no time to stop, just hit the horses. They came up over the top of the roof of the car, and it caved in, and it broke my neck, kind of like Christopher Reeves, but mine's a little bit lower, so I functioned a little bit better than he did, and I'll probably be around a lot longer than he was. And I was immediately rendered a quadriplegic. That happened back in 90, or excuse me, 81. Uh, before my accident, just your average Joe. Um, getting through high school, working, and just taking the ACT. Uh, dating a lot, quite heavily. Um, Trying to figure out where I wanted to go to school, thinking about a mission, trying to fulfill callings in the church, so forth. So, just having a good time, just juggling all the stresses of a senior in high school. Um, immediately after I hit the horses, I was unconscious for a few minutes, and I woke up and I was slumped over in the seat. And I just remember trying to breathe. It was the most difficult thing. It was like being underwater for quite a few minutes and coming up and gasping air because my, the intercostal muscle of my chest didn't work anymore. And so I was breathing with just my diaphragm, which is what music teachers teach you to do. And that was the only thing that I used to breathe. So I was just trying to focus on breathing. My friend was saying, Bernie, wake up, wake up. And I couldn't even talk to him. I was just trying to focus on breathing. Um, they pulled me out of the windshield. And I blacked out after that because of whatever reason, the pain or whatever. And I remember uh, the ride to Heber, waking up for a minute or so there. Nothing they can do in Heber for a spinal cord injury. And then the ride to Salt Lake, I woke up a few times hearing the, am the ambulance siren. And after that, I was unconscious for about a week. Maybe being a quad ain't so bad after all. I mean, I knew I was paralyzed when I woke up from that. But I didn't realize that it was going to be a permanent thing until my, I overheard my dad talking to one of the ICU nurses. And behind the closed curtains, she's saying that um, I'd never regain any feeling or anything back. And it really sunk in after that because um, you just never lose hope. Even after a year or more, you just have that, I had the hope that something would come back. Because a lot of spinal cord injury people some feeling and emotion does come back, but not with me. So, it was quite a transitional period for my, <clears throat> for myself and my family, just going from completely able-bodied to dependent on everybody for everything, almost. My family has been an, just a wonderful support. Without them, I'd probably be stuck or away some corner or dead by now because they just have supported me in whatever I wanted to do and been behind me and all my different school changes and so forth and uh, going through law school and so forth, it's they've been supporting me in whatever I do. Let's try it again, maybe. <laughs> oh, look at that one. Look at that girl. Tan, blonde hair. Well, you stay at attention when I talk to you, son. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm You're good. sitting down. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, the thing I'm most proud of definitely is my career. Just making it through law school, uh, passing the bar. I had to take the bar three times and that was just pure heck doing it, and actually have, having a living where I can support myself. And I'm not a lot of people in wheelchairs, like 90% or so, are unemployed, and especially high quads, it's just not heard of very much. So I'm very proud of that fact that I'm self-sufficient and independent. And of course, I owe a lot of my family and only father, and my only father would be the squad, so. I wanted to be a dentist growing up because that was I want to be a doctor, but I didn't think you could do the 9 to 5 thing, and I want to be with my family more, so I thought I figured dental work would be better. But after my accident, obviously, that wasn't going to be something I could do, so I wanted to be something 
do something in the professions that would help pay for attending care and just keep me in the lifestyle that I wanted to be. My disability had quite an extensive effect on my learning. Many times during law school, and I keep returning to this because that was definitely the most difficult time of my life. Well, right after my accident, it was, it was equally as difficult. But I just wanted to give up. I didn't want to live. I wanted to return home to my father. I just did not want to go on. And somehow, the strength or a door always opened to divert my attention. Um, I remember a dark time during law school, and I just had quit doing the homework. In fact, I lie in bed and watch movies all day sometimes, and I just realized that this was going nowhere. So I got the Book of Mormon, and I just plowed into it day after day, and slowly I could feel the darkness leave, and the light return, and the desire to plow on with school and, and complete what I should be doing, and take an interest in life over again. Evelyn Father always finds a way to divert my attention away from that on was something I should be focusing on. And during law school I just I didn't know how I was gonna make it honestly at time. But plugging away persistence and relying on the bother, that's the way I did it. Humor has been a wonderful a wonderful gift in my life. And a lot of times in the wards or the school, I'm just basically the mascot of the class clown. And I was in school, law school for three and a half years, and each year we did a weekend at Bernie's video. And just did it, we had a little talent show and we played it. And it was just a 15 minute clip. But the second year, we wanted to do something a little bit more wild and crazy. So I actually bungee jumped up in Salt Lake for the video. I will everything I own to the beautiful people in the world on the law school. I better get a good grade out of this guy. And it was scary. <laughs> Being that actually hook a cable to me and then it hauled me up to the platform. And that was actually a lot worse than the bungee jumping part. Mm -hmm. Rotating around, just wishing I were good because it was so scary. And then, yeah, the bungee jumping part was easy. You're up and down, up and down, up and down, there we go. Well, today, the BYU law student got hooked up in a special harness and dropped off a bungee tower in Murray. His jump will be featured in a law school Halloween flick. I'm a Social Security Disability Appeals Attorney. And it was something that I knew about because I was disabled. I knew how these people felt. And um, it's just a matter of people becoming completely and utterly disabled, not able to do any kind of work in the national economy, and they apply for disability, they get denied for whatever reason. And I take over the appeal, uh, gather medical documents, and have them go see the doctors or physical therapists or whatever, and get the reports that we need, and then we go to a hearing up in Salt Lake or a satellite office. And it takes many months to be able to complete a claim but it's, many times it's very fulfilling. And sometimes you look at a person, you can't tell what disability they're under, but if you have to get into the medical documents and so forth, you realize that this person really has some problems. A lot of times you just save a person from uh, being out on the street. Even. So it's a wonderful thing. Favorite scripture, Psalms 1, 1 through 3, I can remember it. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the simple. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in season. And his leaf also shall not wither, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Think of that tree hooking into that river of water, I mean, that's like me hooking into God. doesn't mean the tree is not pruned or cut down or, or just pruned back like a fruit tree, because I've been pruned back a lot. <laughs> and I'm learning how to make my life fruitful. And I've seen, look back at my life when there are times when I'm not connected to that river of water or God, when I've just been dry and barren. 
even though I've seen that, I still go back to that sometimes. It's a Ugaldo, I'm sure. But it's nice to know that that river of water and God is there.